Africans who want to move to the U.S. America is not what you think it is. If you choose to get a black woman, you need to stick with a black woman that came from Africa or you need to bring a woman from Africa here. Do not think that you're going to get the same godly treatment from the black woman that's raised here in America, the descendants of slaves that you got on the African continent. You need to keep a tight community with the other Africans who moved over here because the black community that's here and was here for the past 400 years is divided. Nigga, we can't even go to a goddamn party without the fear of a nigga shooting it up. If you step on a nigga's shoes wrong, this nigga might steal off on you. He might kill you. It is not love in the black community in America like it is in Africa. Most of our kids are reading on a fifth and sixth grade reading level. They are losing their virginities early as shit. Early as elementary, middle, and most of them early high school. We don't believe in marriage. Our women have a 24% marriage rate. Our women have double digit body counts by the time they getting out of high school. These are things you got to think about here. Another thing, when you get here, you got to work like your ass in captivity. So you better be ready. All you can think about is work, 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 get home, go to sleep. Send your kids to school to get indoctrinated by the white man. And then work, 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 work again. These are just a couple of things you got to think about when you come to America. Man, our brother is spilling the tea. He didn't even leave a drop in the cup. Wow, somebody should find me his name or whoever who is handling his, his social media. I need to speak to him to find out who did him that bad because he's not stopping up. Well, first of all, my name is Ben Carson, and I'm the host for the Black Suit Tonight Africa Rising channel. If this is the first time you come into this channel, please subscribe, join, because we bring you reaction to some of these things that revolve around the black community. Those in Africa and those in the diaspora who have had the experience to live with blacks in Asia and China, black in the diaspora that, that have relocated to Ghana, I've had conversations with some of them, and now I'm in the United States land of opportunity to find out that the black community here, man, is a different bogey more together. And our brother is spelling everything out. What we have, it has taken us centuries, we those from Africa that have just come from Africa, it has taken us centuries to spell out. Our brother has said it all for us. So first of all, he speaks about the fact that the black community here is divided. Well, in our previous episode, where we brought you about um, Michael J. White's reaction after stepping in Ghana and his... His idea about the reason why all blacks in America, all blacks in the diaspora should take their trip to go to Ghana. You wouldn't you wouldn't understand or you wouldn't believe it until you you step foot here and then you go to Ghana to, to find out. You see, there's um the division this guy is speaking about, right? It's not like um nobody speak to nobody. That's the point. Like unless they 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 are friends from high school or they They've already clicked at work. Outside, like in Ghana, you see, even when you, you see a random person, just meeting him, you, you got to say hi, say hello. You, you, you see that thing? Like, no, no, no. I, they, they have no business to do with you. No, nobody's saying hi. Take your highs and take and shove it somewhere. That, 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 is, that is a fact. He, he also speak about if you're a black person, relocating from Africa and coming here, the things you need to do is if you're looking for marriage, the black people here don't believe in marriage. And so you better bring your spouse with you. It's a difficult thing to say because we those that also come from Africa, we have, I mean, on rare occasions where maybe somebody will bring their wife or their girlfriend or their husband and then the person end up, you know, cheating or moving away or separating or divorcing the person. And then people will be like, oh, it's not a good idea to bring your wife. Try to stay here let your wife stay at home or try and find a girlfriend here and so some people are going to find it those that have that mentality will, have, will find it weird but the point is don't be surprised to find a 13 or 14 year old black girl here who has like two or three kids now 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 i'm i'm not saying i'm not saying i i agree with him 100 that 
the black CEO or the black ladies don't believe in marriage. Like the stat he gave is like 24%, right? The point is, yeah, there are systems that someone will say, oh, it's the system that's against the black community and so you wouldn't have any choice that to maybe get into a relationship early to feed yourself and so you end up getting, uh, having a child early. That's true. That's, that's, that's true. That, that's some part of the truth. And, and also the fact that schools are categorized into district. And so if you find yourself, of course, because of your income status as a black person, you will likely live in a, in a poor district. So your school and the content or the things that your school teaches and all that, the materials will be a subpar. And so the, the possibility that maybe your, your child is going to excel to go into an Ivy League school or go to college and not drop out of school and be pregnant, it's, it's, it's less, right? And, and and so based on all that, all these facts, the black community is sort of bottled. And that that's their ideology. And I read this book, uh, the New Jim Crow. And then you, the person or the author is trying to um, let us understand the reason why there, there's been a deliberate system to put the black community in certain ghettos and all that, and to put them in castration so that they don't have the right to work and they'll be doing many other jobs. That might also be true. But I feel like some of these things are conscious decisions that we have to make as people. You say we have a proverb in Africa which says, as the hunter is looking for a rock or a stone to throw at the bed, the bed is also finding a new branch to jump on. So if systems are trying to put you down, you try to outsmart it by also elevating yourself from that hole or from that from, from that bottleneck. It's difficult, it's going to be difficult, but it takes consistent and conscious effort to do that. You don't you don't lay back because systems are pressing this, so let me go and lie down and be choked to death. You don't do that. This this same school district thing, it's like, maybe you see that like people are making a, a lot of things about it, but even in Ghana, where, where I hail from, right? If you find yourself living in the village, you can't travel to the city to go to school every day. It's likely you'll be schooling in the nearby school with you, unless you want to do the mile. You want to, you want to walk like three, four, five miles to go to school. Well, nobody's, but the tenders for you to school in a, in a dilapidated school, even some of our schools don't even have chairs in classrooms or even roof over the kids' heads, but we manage. Sometimes we'll be studying the school that I went to and then rain will be coming at you. Sometimes we have to close the moment, you know, the clouds start coming up. But that is how we, we sail through. I wouldn't say I was the best student in the Ghana, the BC or the WASI, but at least in all those categories, the, the junior high school certificate exam and the senior high school certificate exam, at least I was in the top 10%. And I was in the village. I was schooling in the village in the dilapidated school, but as the conscious effort, we, we need as a community, I don't know if we need to like, I mean, if you go to every job, every workplace, like they have like a black sort of club or community there where they sort of speak to the black people, but then it's still not working. I don't know if we need like a seminar, a weekly or a daily seminar where we sort of bottle all black people there to, to come in. For instance, you meet a cop and you start arguing. Resisting arrest and all that. I, man, I, I got my crib. I'm not going to do that. I mean, I, I, that's not the point. It, it, and sometimes even when you surrender, you get shot. But those those ones are minimal than when you apprehend, you got shot. So if you want to come home alive, do the statistics. How many people resisted arrest and got killed? How many people didn't resist arrest and maybe they were incarcerated? Yes, they will take you in. The fact that you are resisting doesn't mean they're going to leave you. They are probably going to shoot you or tase you. Right, so these are conscious effort that we don't. I mean, Michael J. White was speaking and he said, We black, we, uh, he realized that the, the black Americans here are as loud as hell. See, sometimes it's not every opportunity, every situation that like you, you have to be loud, let your voice be heard, right? Sometimes you have, you have to mellow to rise up, sometimes you have to agree. Like this guy says, uh, I, I need to find his name, man. He says, You can't even go to a party. Thinking that you come alive because there's a tendency that a black person will shoot it up. Yes, everybody, they have a term like, I'm stripped, I'm stripped. Stripped doesn't mean he got his clothes off, his clothes off. No, stripped means he got a gun. That's a new term I learned from here. There was also a time, I think I was going to buy a car from a dealership, like a Mexican dealership, and we were talking about a documentation. This black guy walked in with a like a teenager that I think was a, maybe a, the child or a nephew, and they all got guns strapped to them. I don't know what kind of job you are doing, but the guns were naked, like I could see it. It wasn't even covered. Guns, loaded guns, right? So when, when a cop sees you like that, at least the cop is going to apprehend you, at least to ask, 
if you don't have any tag or anything to show, like you are working in the security or in the army, a cop is going to pull you over, right? And before maybe the altercation goes right, somebody might probably be shot out of your no intention, but just by virtue of making rights look evil, right? So he also talked about him. I mean, the married thing is difficult. I don't want to speak about it, but the part that hit me was the fact that before a black girl or teenager leaves school, that child might have had like double body count. Now, body count is not like how many people you, 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 you first bump. Body count is like how many people that child, that girl, that teenager has had sex with in, in high school. And that is double digit, like from 10 upward. As horrific and as whatever that may sound, there might be some truth to it because I've seen it in my own eyes. I, I went to the women, there's, there's a place called Riverfront. And I went there, it's like nine time, daytime people can go there, but nine time it's nice to take a walk. And I went there one time and what I saw with my eyes, teenagers having sex in the bushes and in the, in, but I wouldn't say having sex, but you could see that. Like, I mean, they were, they were in deep romance. Well, I didn't see it in, but, <laughs> but at least they, they were tangled together in front of the, I mean, there were some shrubs, like bush in front of the, the river. People were there. There was that garden. People walk, walk into the gardens, like. 800 meters or 900 meters. People walk there, take the trip, and it's dark, a bit dark in there. People doing their stuff on there. Sitting on the floor, lying on the floor, doing things. Teenagers, high school students. I could see it with my own eyes. The clothes that they are wearing, everything speaks to what this guy is saying. And, and I can't blame the black community like holy. Like I said, maybe there are systems, the poverty or whatever is put it into but these are questions you can take yourself out of that i know there are also the minimal cases where people get raped and all that these are these are minimal cases right and even with that we can avoid that or we can well rape some you can't really avoid avoid like rape but i mean you can decrease the chance of letting it happen by also thinking about your situations man you see that dude that you just realized man that guy is not right or this party that i'm going there's a tendency something might happen because these guys that we are associating with, we don't know nobody. And the way they are behaving, they look like they can they can cause me trouble. Stay out of it. Your dressing speaks a lot about you. You see, you see girls like with their with their with their panties all showing their I mean their their their, their butt cheeks and all that. And sometimes you can you can look at them and see their their private part in their clothes. Like you can just see it. It's just the fact that something is covering it, but you just see it drawn all in the clothes. Man, yeah, this is civilization. This is this is liberty. But if the liberty is getting us into trouble, we, we have to avoid it. Another part that he speaks is, is the division, that the actual division. If you're a black African that you come here and you go to a job and they give you a black supervisor, the tendency that you're going to be frustrated and drop out or quit that job is hard. I have friends that told me about how their black bosses are treating them. If you want to went to interview and there's a black person interviewing them, it's a different ballgame altogether. Someone told me, and I think he, the person was joking that the black the black Americans here think that we those that we those that have come from Africa and it's our ancestors that sold them to slavery to slavery, so they hate us. No, I, I, that is that is damn as hell. That is damn. That is that's damn excuse. Do you think we are also finding it easy over there? Why are we running here? Life is life. So let me tell you, our family that left. Yeah, you went through hell here, but we haven't found it easy with those that you left us here. Because the leaders that sold you, they are the ones that are keeping us. And if they had, if they had, if they had the mentality to sell their own relatives, guess what they would do to us, those that are living with them. So it hasn't been easy. People are plundering, our leaders are plundering our wealth, and we are, we are wanting in poverty. We are dying. People are going hungry. At least here you get food to eat. Right? So life hasn't been easy. Nobody sold nobody. Slavery is something that we have to, we have to condemn all the time, but we can't always live in the past like that. We have to move move away from it. In a previous episode, I said it. We have to move away from, a, from that history, the dark history. Go to Ghana, see what happened to you, and think about the opportunity that you have here to make the difference. St start loving your neighbor. Start loving your black neighbor. If you see your black neighbor in trouble, and you can help, help that person. Help him. Somebody told me, like speaking about this division and the, the hatred for the, the, the black Africans that come here. Man, one black guy went to went to a, a mechanic. At least that's how you say it here. Went to repair the car. You saw a black a black mechanic, 
And he's like, man, my car broke down and I think I need a mechanic. The guy's like, what, 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 what is he saying? I mean, we don't, we, we don't know what you're talking about. Blah, 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 blah. That guy never helped him because he said mechanic and not mechanic. The guy has to go back, find someone, call, and then bring the phone to the person to speak to him. And he's like, man, my brother here needs a mechanic. And he's like, oh, damn, that guy, me, the asset, you know, the asset, I was not got it, nothing. You got it. You just didn't want to help. See, we, we, we need to stop all these. The fact that you are black, you got a black complexion, you got something, you got everything to do with the continent of Africa. I'm advising every black American, right, to take the trip to Africa. You don't even need to visit the slave castles. On the street, you see people your age or less than you, handsome, tall, thick, black and beautiful, in the hot day sun, struggling to survive, to find something to eat. You got life figured out here for the, figured out for you, like half. Like your life is figured out for you, like 50 or 60% here by the state or the, the, the federal government here. Life is good, it's okay. Sometimes, even if you want to work in a warehouse here and you're a black person, and if it's the warehouse you want to work, you can you can have a very decent life. Even if it's just a warehouse and you want to get paid like $15 a month, uh, $15 an hour, you can still make life work if you want it to work. But you don't take $15 an hour and you want to party all the parties in the, in the, in the week. You want to have all them hoes in the, in the town, right? We need to work on this. I, I just wish there would be, there would be like a seminar or someone who consciously like, like educate, educate our people. We, we don't need to be apprehensive. We don't need to be loud to be heard, right? If if you have to school, teach your child to put yourself, your child through school to let him go to college at least, to to be able to, to make decisions for himself and his black community. If if you have to be in a state. Senate or the, the, the federal or the, 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 the whatever Senate or the House of whatever and it is school that will have to strive there. If you don't reach it, you'll be at a place where you'll be comfortable with you and your family. School, school works. Not all the time, but it does work most of the time, right? And it's difficult. Yeah, we face struggle, but if you want to always relax, find it difficult at the beginning, trust me, you're going to, you're going to hustle at the end. That's how life is. It's a give and take affair. You give in at the lower side, strive, go to school. It's difficult. You have to pay the fees and all that. Go through hell, submit an assignment and all. But at the end, you're going to survive. You're going to be... School is not going to teach you to be wise, but it will teach you how to be wise. Right? Let's, 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 let's try to have ourselves. Let's love each other. Let's, let's be united. When you see your fellow person from Africa, don't think about the accent. You can understand. When I came here, when people are speaking... The, when trust me, do you think when you you, you speak um you speak that fast black American thing, do you think we hear it all? No, we get like sixty percent, but we try to put out the forty percent. We try to imagine it and understand you. That's how we're able to communicate with you. So see us as your brother. When you go to the corner, you see people with your same complexion. People are just like you. Okay, we are, we 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 are the same. Please, please, we are the same people, right? Go to Africa, go to somewhere, see see for yourself, and that transformation will be the best education that you ever get. A lot of black people don't want to leave their back. They don't want to leave even their village or their city, or let alone to go to another town or, or country, right? Travel and see, and then you realize that you have great opportunity to make the difference, right? Than, than you think. Yeah, the system might be wrong, but it's wrong everywhere, okay? Let's try to help each other. Once again, my name is Ben Kassi. If this, this is your first time here, subscribe to the channel and, you know, let's react. Let me also know what you think about what Abraham said, right, in the comment section. Let me know what you think because as as long as he's right some, somehow, at some other point, you know, I know sometimes people are helpless in one way or the other. But the body, body count part, that really got me, really hit me hard. My name is Ben Kassi. And see you when I see you in my next episode.